This is an analysis of the technique and composition of Leo Leone's Frederick. Frederick's pictures are created through painted paper cutouts layered on top of one another. It is a collage of gathered materials, not too unlike how the mice in this story are gathering supplies for the winter. There are several techniques that the author used to create texture within the pictures. The papers aren't solid colors on their own. The different brush strokes of paint adds detail to the stones, the plants, the grass, the grains, nuts, and corn, and the mice themselves. Nothing cut out is entirely smooth, either. There are edges and corners, remnants left by the cuts of scissors, showing how nothing is quite perfect. The author doesn't try to hide the fact that it is paper, leaning into that to fit the down-to-earth feeling of the story. One other technique is avoiding those straight scissor cuts by ripping edges to add further texture. This is seen on the large ground pieces in the first half of the book. The mice, the focus of the story, also have ruffled edges to simulate their fur. Starting on page 13, the little scraps of food on the ground are ripped up pieces of paper, better representing of the leftovers than singular perfect grains of wheat would be, as these show the result of little mouse nibbles. Another way we can look at the story is by seeing what is and isn't represented by paper. Almost everything is. The ants probably aren't on page 6, but they are so small and delicate that that detail can be set aside, as the butterfly on that page is made from paper. What is truly interesting is in the second half. On page 15, Frederick shares the sunbeams with the other mice, and a gently painted yellow glow shines on the rocks. In the next page, Frederick shares the colors of the many plants, and as the book states, the colors had been painted in the mice's minds, just how the paper thought bubbles had been painted. It is the immaterial, that which lacks a physicality, that is painted and placed emphasis upon within this book. The author could have cut out paper to represent sunbeams and colors, but chose not to in order to create this distinction. The use of space within the composition is key to the story as well, primarily the use of negative space. The white background, which the papers are stacked upon, make those colorful shapes pop out all the more. The sun on page 8 and the tall grass stalks on page 10 are deeply contrasted against the white sky. The thought and speech bubbles on pages 16 and 17 are white paper to help contrast the poem and colors from the rock behind them. The big open sky of the first half is replaced by an almost claustrophobic background of the giant stones filling up the space inside their home in the wall. The smaller stones frame around the larger rock at the back, creating this confined feeling. The paper cutouts of the stones are new each page, but they are cut into exactly the same shape. This all fits the dreary and monotonous life the mice are living during winter, showing, not just telling, why the mice need what Frederick has to share. Space is also used in the book to emphasize the separation between Frederick and the other mice. It starts on page 6, when Frederick is on a level below the other mice, looking at the trail of ants. When the mice are gathering supplies for winter, they move farther and farther across the page, eventually leaving the frame while Frederick stays to the left side. When Frederick finally shares what he gathered, he's standing on the rock above the other mice, still separated. And on the final page, when he accepts their praise as a poet, Frederick is in the center of the page, spotlighted, standing on top of his rock. 
Frederick sees the world differently from the other mice, and this is established through the use of space, but also through body language. On page 6, he is staring at the ants, not at the food like the other mice. This continues while the mice are all gathering supplies. They are heading in a direction to the right, while Frederick is facing a different direction, focusing on other things. Frederick has one physical characteristic that makes him distinct from the other mice, and that is his eyes. He is primarily shown with half-lidded eyes, while the other mice are not. This represents the thoughtfulness of his character, and makes him visually distinct. Body language isn't given just to Frederick, of course. The other mice are given some subtly, too, like how their tails change from flat with sadness on page 13 to raised and happy in the pages after. The most change, however, is for Frederick. At the start of the 50th anniversary edition of the book, the author Leonard Marcus has a statement commenting on aspects of the book previously pointed out here. He comments on how Frederick doesn't bring physical supplies to the mice, but the immaterial and its importance. He wrote, No one lives on bread alone. This unassuming yet surprisingly sophisticated fable goes on to show us when Frederick's seemingly up-in-the-clouds efforts more than prove their worth. To comment on the technique of the pictures, Marcus wrote, Leone's playful cut paper collages, with their loving concern for the texture, color, and form, are not just images on the page, but also invitations to preschoolers to make their own sticky-fingered scissors and paste art. Frederick the mouse is shown as distant and different to the other mice, not going along with whatever it is they're doing. However, this book shows us, with Frederick standing above the others, sharing colors and his words, that his contribution is valuable too. Even if you feel distant from other people, there are still simple but beautiful ways you can change others. The book is approachable in its visual simplicity, and is made to inspire others to make stories and pictures just like this. It definitely worked for me, as I now want to make a collage as well after studying this book. In summary, Leo Leone used techniques with the paper to create a sense of texture that adds depth to the images and a rough charm to the story. Choosing carefully what to represent with paper and what not lets us discuss the difference between the physical and the non-physical that the mice had gathered. The use of negative space helped create contrast for the shapes, helped create an enclosed feeling of the den compared to the open sky, and established the mental distance between Frederick and the others. The use of small details, like body language, give life to the story and characters, which is difficult to do in a book as short as this. It's message that despite the difference between others, there is always value in sharing ideas, no matter how small, is supported by the pictures, not just the words. The techniques used and the way the pictures have been composed fits the story like a glove, and I can't imagine the story working as well in a different style. <laughs>